Okay, so what we're using is an AES Wave 60 amp current clamp and an AES Wave U-scope. And as you see, when I power this up, see if we can get that on there without a glare, gives me a bunch of options. Starts out with just a generic lab scope, and then can go down to primary ignition voltage, primary ignition current, secondary ignition, AC filter, and auto setup. So I'm going to go ahead and do auto setup just for a reference point to start with and then I'm going to pause the video and get everything hooked up and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Alright, so I got the oscope all set up here. I've got the amp clamp hooked to the positive wire coming off the battery going down to the starter. Um, what I'm not sure yet of is if I've got correct polarity. Now it's going to be real easy to determine when I go in and sit in the vehicle here in a second and do the crank. If I get no reading at all, it just means that I've got the probe in the reverse polarity. No big deal. Unclamp it, turn it around the right way. Um, I think I've got it in the right polarity, but hey, we'll find out. All right, so I got it set on 60 amps on the probe. I'm going to zero it out. I've got the O-scope all set up, ready to read. Um, thing to remember with these vehicles when you're doing these, these relative compression checks or what I call a comparative compression check, you all you're wanting to do is you want the starter to crank. You don't want the vehicle to start. Now I've already checked this vehicle out to begin with. There's a lot of the vehicles out there that if you put your foot to the floor with the, with the gas pedal, so you've got the throttle fully open, when you turn the key, there's a sensor in there that sees that it's wide open throttle and it won't allow the vehicle to start, it'll just crank. And that's perfect for doing these types of tests like I'm doing here. There are some vehicles out there though, however, that don't do it that way. And if that's the case, if you don't have a vehicle that'll disable it with the throttle full, full open like that, then you'll have to do a little more preparation for your test. Maybe disable the fuel rail disable the fuel pump something along those lines all right so here we go i've got the pedal to the floor here got my o scope i'm going to set that up so where you guys can see that and i'm going to crank it over and there you go all right so one other thing that's really important to note here when you're going to do this test in order for it to be a valid test, you've got to have a charged battery. If you don't have a charged battery, this test isn't really going to show you anything because instead of seeing, like you see right here, these, these real uniform peaks and, and valleys, you'll get, of course, the, the starter will lag and drag and it'll show up on your oscope. So let me pause this for a second, see if I can get this waveform a little bit more centered on the screen here. Okay, so I adjusted the cursors, both the vertical and horizontal, in order to get this waveform centered in the screen better on this oscilloscope. Um, now one of the things that this doesn't do just by only hooking up an amp clamp and then, you know, cranking the engine over is it does not identify cylinders. Um, you could do that. There's an easy way to do it. You could either, you know, have a two channel or four channel scope. And if you had another channel, you could hook that up to one of the ignition coil wires or spark plug wires um, with the second channel with a, an inductive pickup. And then every time that fired, it would throw another line on the second channel and you could identify if you knew what firing order the vehicle is that you're doing, you know, how the firing order is on the engine, you knew which one you'd hook that inductive clamp up to. So every time it fired, you know, for instance, you know, it was uh, say number one cylinder. Well, then once you had that marked on the same graph as this relative compression, well, then you would know that, okay, that's the one cylinder. You would have to know the firing order of the vehicle, you know, one, three, seven, five, however that goes. But then you could identify which cylinders you're looking at here. Um, I use this primarily just to verify that I don't have 
a mechanical misfire. Most of the work I do is electronics, diagnostics, and troubleshooting, and and basic repair like that. I don't do any of the major repair stuff. You know, had I had I hooked this oscilloscope up to this vehicle, cranked it over, and seen that I had one or more of these that were you know dropping out instead of being nice and uniform, that leads me to think of springs and rings, maybe a timing chain off if it's a dual overhead cam or variable valve timing. I mean, there's there's a bunch of variables there that are not plugs and wires and and electronic stuff. So I use this primarily when a customer comes in to me, has a vehicle with a check engine light on it, a misfire, and I, you know, I've already done my scan tool. I've put it on there. The scan tool usually identifies one or more um, cylinder misfires and, and can identify them. Occasionally, though, you get vehicles that'll come in, you'll throw your scan tool on there, and it'll just give you, say, a P0300, which is a random misfire or a, um, what do they call that, uh, miscellaneous misfire, misfiring cylinder. So this is really convenient to be able to hook this up real quick, do a relative compression test. As you can see on this vehicle here, um, this is a four-cylinder engine. So I did more than enough counts to catch, you know, each of the cylinders. So you can see here, this thing does not suffer from a mechanical compression issue. Now, the thing about this that I don't like, and there is some math that you can do. Um, and if you guys are interested, if, if you want to know some more about this stuff, hit me up, hit my email up or hit me up at work. Those of you, that, my friends that I'm doing this for, and I can give you a link to a couple of, of other sites um, one guy in particular that has a, a mathematical equation figured out for how to do a division type of thing it's almost an algebraic equation in fact it is an algebraic equation on how to figure out what your psi is based on the uh, reference points that you're getting off of this because like i said with this you know just looking at this scope right here yeah i'm i'm fairly confident that i don't have a mechanical misfire However, what I'm not confident about is, you know, say this was a real high mileage engine. Um, let's say that all the cylinders were, you know, experiencing a little bit of blow by or, you know, had weak rings or weak springs. Um, this doesn't tell me that. All this tells me is that in comparison to the other cylinders, all of the cylinders seem to be firing the same. Um, this is normally called a relative compression test. I think of it more as a comparative compression test. And the reason why is because I'm literally comparing each cylinder to the one next to it and the one in the one on the other side of it you know what i mean if that makes sense like if i think i have a for instance a cylinder number five misfire and i've gone through and i've you know made a way to be able to identify that and i go through this i'm looking at the cylinder before it that fires and the cylinder that after it that fires it and i'm comparing those humps and if they're all uniform then i'm i'm saying based on that comparative that they're fine so i, I call it a comparative cylinder um, compression test. It's it's also known as a relative compression test. So anyways, there's that. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up and I'll answer them for you. All right. Thanks. Bye.